1961 movie of the same name, as well as an Elvis look-alike. Louis won 10 national nine ball tournaments and five times he won the Missouri State Nine Ball Championship. After his fifth consecutive <laughs> win in the Missouri tournament, Louis was barred from playing in that tournament ever again. <laughs> Memorable wins include the Citrus Open, the Miami Open, the North Carolina State Open, the California State Open, the four state nine ball championship, and twice Louis won the Orlando Open, which was a prestigious nine ball tournament. Perhaps his most notable win was in the US Open in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where he lost his opening match in a double elimination tournament, and then he proceeded to win 11 matches in a row in the loser's bracket, beating his all-time nemesis, Buddy Hall, very famous bull player, who was the world nine, wall, nine ball champion at the time. And in the semifinals, he beat Buddy Hall, and then he went on to beat Willie Munson to become the US Open champion. We're very proud of that. Louis was a technical advisor for the movie, The Color of Money, featuring actors Paul Newman and Tom Cruise. In fact, the director thought Louis was so photogenic he put Louie in the movie at the end when they're doing the final uh, pool championship tournament and Louie was called to table number two as the incomparable St. Louis Louie. <clears throat> yeah, it was cool. Uh, he also did a lot of trick shots for Paul Newman. Paul Newman was a very good <laughs> shot. Tom Cruise, not so good. <laughs> And he kind of disliked the professionals that were there to teach him. He couldn't make that bridge, you know, so. Tom Cruise, as a matter of fact, told the director not to shoot Louie and him in the same scene. Maybe a little too much good luck competition there. <laughs> Louie served in the U.S. Air Force from 1968 to 1970, where he suffered major hearing loss in Vietnam when a bomb exploded near the aircraft he was working on. The hearing loss was one of the reasons why Lou talked so loudly and also why some felt he was kind of stuck up, but he actually didn't hear what that person was saying and he gave no response, but he had a lot of hearing loss. A book was written about Louis called Have Pool Q Will Travel, and a screenplay of this book has been written by Joe Evola as a possible movie of Louis' life. And I'd like to recognize Joe Evola, who came out here today. He wrote this screenplay. Thank you. Uh, and he's here to honor Louis uh, in receiving this Cleveland High School uh, award from the Alumni Association. Okay, at Cleveland, Louis ran cross country for four years. He pole vaulted four years, and he was also on the gym team for one year. He continued to show off his gymnastics skills by walking around pool tables on his hands as a bit of comic relief during his pool matches. The audiences always loved him, and we think Lou was one of the greatest pool showmen in the game. Louis was also the senior escort for Miss Football Judy Yeager in the fall of 68. <clears throat> the next few statements are a little bit tough to deliver, but I'd like to deliver them today with so many alumni here. As many of you may know, the Mesa Police Department listed Louis's death in December 1991 as a possible suicide. The true fact, and I would like to state it today, that Louis was murdered and did not take his own life. First, John Auble, you might remember him as a notable reporter. I commissioned John Auble to help me investigate this death 
in Mesa, Arizona. In turn, John Alville hired a friend of his in Mesa, Arizona to investigate Lou's death. A paraffin test was immediately performed on both of Louis's hands, and we've got our police person here that can tell us that that's a good test to run, where no gunpowder gun residue was found. Secondly, the entry of the bullet would conclude that it was shot by someone right-handed. In fact, Louis was ambidextrous, playing pool with his right hand all the time in tournaments, but he also wrote and shot guns with his left hand which we have pictures, of course, to prove. The murderer assumed Louis was right-handed, since he always played pool with his right hand, uh, unless he was hustling someone by playing with his left hand and then switching to his right hand, <laughs> saying, I can beat you just as badly with my opposite hand, <clears throat> which was really his main pool playing right hand. Thirdly, his girlfriend at the time had a son-in-law who had threatened to hurt Louis many times. This son-in-law was a known drug dealer, connections with the Mesa Police Department. On the day of his death, Louis called a very important friend back here in St. Louis, which we have records of, and told this friend that his life was being threatened. This friend told him to immediately get on the next plane and come back home to St. Louis. Unfortunately, Louis stayed, and that evening he was murdered. And our phone calls can reveal that record. Louis and our family were brought up very religiously to know you cannot and should not take your own life. We even talked about it, Louis and I, and he would always say, no way would I send myself to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> Another humorous fact is that Louis was actually afraid of his own shadow. He hated guns and any physical confrontations. He was a little smaller than the average male. He was so afraid of having his thumbs broken like Paul Newman in The Hustler that one time he went to a bathroom feeling like maybe he hustled a little too hard and he climbed out a small bathroom window <laughs> when he was hustling and winning in a small town local bar, which you know you should never do. And uh, his opponent's money backers were really, really mad. They were chasing him. The, the good thing is that Louis was on the cross country team at Cleveland High School. <laughs> and thanks to that training, he hightailed it out of that town on foot like a jackrabbit and never returned, nor did he get his winnings. As his sister, I can tell you, Louis was kind hearted, generous, and would give you the last dollar in his pocket. As a final true and humor story, Louis asked me to go with him after high school one day to watch him play pool on Southwest Avenue at a bowling alley called Our Way Bowl, which had several nice pool tables. He was trying to hustle up a game saying, does anybody here want to play a few games of nine ball for a few dollars? Well, two guys stepped up pretty quickly and they won several games of nine ball against Louis at $10 a piece, which was a lot in those days, uh, while Louis played with his unnatural left hand. <clears throat> Again, he was ambidextrous, writing with his left, but playing with his right. And <clears throat> uh, after three losses, Louis stepped up and said, okay, I'll play both of you in eight ball with my girlfriend here, and she'll be my partner, and I'll even switch hands from my left hand to my right. But we have to up the ante so I can try to win some of my money back. Well, you could have just knocked me off my chair. I had no idea I was going to be in this game. <laughs> now, he was on the hustle, and I'm right in the middle of it. Luckily, I thought to myself, well, we really have to get out of here, lose a cross-country guy, and I was on the track and field team, so we can run. Like a win. Um, <clears throat> I was a pretty good pool shooter for a gal also, playing Louie a lot on our E.B. E. Schmidt Italian slate table at home that our dad bought after winning a very large poker game on the hill. <laughs> While I made a few balls on that day with Lou, I was told to mostly set the cue ball in a bad spot so the next guy up wouldn't have a shot or a bad shot at that. Needless to say, we won a lot of money, or so we thought at that time, but the next week after that match, Lou surprised me by buying me my first ritual wrist watch. I didn't have one. I guess I was a decent player for him that day, and he played perfectly into his eight ball strategy. 
I want to thank the Cleveland High School Wall of Fame Committee for honoring my brother, Francis Lewis Roberts, St. Louis Louie, with this Lifetime Achievement Award. And it is not only Lou's high school achievements, but it also signifies how far Lou went with national recognition, the sport of his choice, pocket billiards, and a particular nine ball. Thank you for your attention.